I began to, you know, really just like, what do I want in a marriage? What do I want in a family? You know, what kind of cycles do I need to break so that my life looks different? Welcome to the Marvelous Moms Club podcast. Discover yourself, break out of mediocrity, and become the mom you've always aspired to be. Here's your host, Kirsten Tyrell. Hey everybody, welcome to today's episode. This is, I say this sometimes, this is long overdue, but today's episode is actually kind of exciting for me because this is like, it kind of takes me back a little bit because a lot of my guests from Marvelous Moms Club actually came from Periscope. You've probably heard me talk about this a million times and Periscope is basically dead in the water, but my guest today is somebody that I connected with on Periscope years ago and she's here. So welcome Jess Winnett to the podcast. I'm so excited that you're here. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. So we have a lot to talk about. <laughs> There's so many different directions that we can go with this. But let's start by kind of giving everybody a picture of what your mommy life looks like. How old are your kids? How many do you have? All that good stuff. Yes. Yeah, so um, I have four under six. So I have a six-year-old, four-year-old, two-year-old, and a four-month-old. So oh my gosh. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I realized that. You have so it's, many kids. <laughs> it is. It's busy and we homeschool. So we just add a little oh. extra crazy in there. <laughs> so, you sound so like I, somebody I know. Maybe oh, it's like me. Yeah. yeah. Right. Except right? for the homeschooling didn't work out for us for very right? long. Right. <laughs> I hear you. It's it's a challenge at times for sure. But yeah, we definitely keep busy. We um, you know, most of my days are definitely spent changing diapers and uh, nursing at this point and, you know, napping sometimes because the baby's going through a four month sleep regression. And so it's just, you know, oh, a lot yep. of, um, you know, just in the, in the middle of it right now, you know, <laughs> that, that yeah. really early, early years, um, with lots of littles. So yeah, it's, it's definitely busy. Yeah. I did not even realize that your oldest was that young, you yes. know, like I just, I totally thought we had the exact same, like kind of age span with our kids, but I mean, it's been like two and a half years ish since probably I first saw you on Periscope. And so at that yeah. time, you really had little, little kids and mm -hmm. you've been able to do so much. So here's kind of, I feel like there's two different directions I really want to go with this. You've really created a life for your children that's so different from the life that you had. So I want to go into your past a little bit mm -hmm. because I, I love a good success story. I love hearing about how your past doesn't dictate your future, all that good stuff. But also yes. like you and your husband have built like a multi-million dollar business in mm -hmm. the process of building a big family. And I say big. I don't think four mm -hmm. kids is big. I just think four right. kids under six is a big undertaking. So right. I mean, let's maybe dive into like, let's maybe work our way backwards into your past a little bit and kind of what mm -hmm. your upbringing looked like and, and where you kind of made the, the, the decision that you were going to do it differently. Yeah, that's, um, you know, I, I'm always fascinated too with like a comeback story, you know, and, mm -hmm. and yeah. mine is, mine is that for sure. I think that, you know, I, uh, my parents divorced when I was three and, um, we kind of grew up, um, my siblings and I, I had halves and steps and, you know, I don't have even a full sibling. So I had, you know, I had a lot of, um, you know, dysfunction. We put the fun in dysfunction, I say. So we, you know, we had a lot of just like, <laughs> it was all over the place. My parents were divorced at three. And then, um, my dad remarried, my mom remarried. Uh, my mom's actually been married five times. Um, oh my goodness. so yeah, so it's, um, it's been quite the journey just with that, even just, you know, watching people in and out of marriage is a lot in my life and even not really knowing what a functional, um, healthy marriage looked like, um, mm -hmm. not having that modeled for you was, you know, when my husband and I got married, his parents were married for, you know, 20 something years at that point. And, um, you know, so it was not even on his radar. Divorce wasn't even on his radar. He didn't know what that looked like. And yeah. I was raised in that. And so, um, you know, and, and then my mom married a hell's angel, which is kind of crazy. Oh um, my gosh. So my whole upbringing was like, you know, a lot of drugs and alcohol and, um, a lot of just craziness, 911 calls. Yeah. Um, my dad, um, you know, I, he struggled with anger a lot of my life. So, you know, when he would rage or, um, you know, that was unhealthy and there was a lot of abuse there. And, you know, so it was just really a kind of crazy, um, drama filled ch childhood. And so when I came into adulthood, 
um, you know, I be, I became a Christian when I was 19. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, I turned my life around. I got off drugs myself and, um, you know, kind of came out of that own lifestyle that I had adopted myself even. And I began to, you know, really just like, what do I want in a marriage? What do I want in a family? You know, what kind of cycles do I need to break so that my life looks different, you know? And so, um, that really kind of started this journey for me of kind of figuring out, you know, if I had like the fairy tale family and I went through this, like, you know, kind of one end of the spectrum to the other. So I kind of got a little Mm -hmm. crazy in some things, but I, but I just really started to, you know, ask myself, like, if I had that life that I, you know, I wanted growing up, you know, if I wanted to do that for my family, what would that look like? And so, um, there were just some non-negotiables for me. And when I met my husband, he is, and still is the most amazing man. And, um, you know, he's just such a guy of integrity. I mean, like I was his first kiss. Like it was just crazy. Like, oh, all these things. I was like, my husband's first you know, kiss. That is I so love that. funny. I love that. <laughs> so it's just really like, we just, you know, it was so different, you know, coming into his family even and, yeah. um, just what, from what I grew up with, you know? And so really having, um, no model. I just really dove into personal development myself, t- developing myself and really, you know, getting around people that, um, I wanted to have, you know, this example in, and I wanted to model. And I, mm-hmm. like, I, I do that in really any area of my life. And I think that cuts out the learning curve so often for us, whether it's in yeah. business or it's in, you know, marriage or raising our kids. It's like, you know, um, reading books and getting into courses and, you know, getting around people and into community where we can really learn from other people. You know, it's like experience is the best teacher, but it doesn't have to be our experience. And so we can really dive in and learn from other people. And that's what, that's what I did. And that's what I'm still doing. Honestly, it's like every single day I feel like, you know, Oh, that's not working, you know, and I need to adjust. And so, um, and so that's what we've done. Like we've just really been intentional I would say that's mm-hmm. like been my like life word, you know, is just like yeah. focusing and being intentional on, on what I want for my kids, what kind of mom I want to be and, um, what kind of wife I want to be. And so that's, you know, that's been really coming out of that. Um, I learned a lot from my parents, what not to do. I learned a lot of great things from them, to be honest with you. I, mm-hmm. you know, my, my dad taught me a lot of great things. My mom taught me a lot of great things. But um, I learned a lot of what not to do. And so if anything, I think that I've just learned that there's certain things I need to break the cycle of and certain things I can carry on with me too. So, yeah. yeah. Have there been any times when, because I mean, hearing it, other people listening will say, oh, you make it sound so easy. Like you just broke this amazingly wretched cycle and created this life (laughs) that's really quite amazing. So do you feel like it's even a difficult struggle anymore to intentionally make those decisions or is it easy because you see how you don't want your life to turn out? Oh gosh, all the time. Like I, I mean, I can even say like people meet me and I'm, I'm generally a pretty like sweet and happy person. I don't know, like Mm -hmm. it's weird saying that about myself, but like I can, I mean, I, I generally keep pretty positive. And so people are like, you are probably all like this all the time. And honestly, I struggle (laughs) a lot with anger. (laughs) So I yell at my kids. I snap at them a lot. I really, I mean, I am like constantly a work in progress to that. And like, I literally have like a, a book right now I'm staring at called triggers about being angry, you know, like, I just Interesting. Really, yeah. So it's funny how like, you know, um, like we talk about like breaking those cycles. That's something that I am still like, this is not the type of mom I want to be, you know, and mm-hmm. I'm still working on that. Like I'm still, it is, it is hard work. Anything worth it is hard work, you know? And so yeah, with my, you know, with my marriage, like we had a rough first year, like our first year was rough. And so we would. I bet. Well, you're like, coming from fight. such different backgrounds. Oh man. <laughs> Oh man. So it was different. like, and then my, you know, you know, it was like the move, the TV. So I would like to get on this crazy fight, you know, and I'd be like on the edge of the bed and not wanting to like touch his leg or whatever. And I'm like, you need to go sleep on the couch. And he's like, why do I need to go sleep on the couch? You're the one who's still angry. I'm okay. You know? And so, <laughs> you know, and so I just end up on the other, you know, in the other room, the guest room, sleeping in the other room. And so it was just like this, you know, crazy everyday fighting. My husband's very passionate. He's not a screamer like I am, but like he, you know, mm-hmm. we, we would just fight. And so really learning like, 
it doesn't have to be like this, you know, and, Mm -hmm. you know, we still get in those like, you know, passionate, heated, you know, kind of arguments or whatever, but it's nothing like it used to be. And we just, you know, you just learn and you mature and you grow. And I think like a lot of that too, is just like, I think you know how it is. It's like from the, even like the first kid to the fourth kid, I'm learning that like, yeah, that's not that big of a deal. <laughs> you know, and you let yeah, things go yeah. a lot more and totally kind of <laughs> learn to, you know what I mean? Like, you're just like, yeah, I just, I used to freak out about that and it's just not that big of a deal. So, right. Um, but yeah, it's not easy for sure. I don't think anything like that for, especially since that's like what you're learned, um, upbringing is, I just don't think it's easy to break free of that. And it's something that, yeah. you know, through, through counseling and through, um, community and through it being modeled and through a lot of books, personal development and just constant, like working on this thing. I, um, it's getting better. So that, I will say that. <laughs> so. That's good. Okay. Well, I'm really glad to know that. Cause I think that's an important part of the story to tell when it's a success story is like, it's not, it's not okay. I'm good now. Like I have this life and I've created this, mm-hmm. this different life now and it's just great. It's smooth sailing and I'm normal like everyone else because <laughs> there's, there's scars you bear, right? Like you're you still <laughs> totally, you even, you came off of a life where you actually were doing drugs yourself and now you're this, right. this successful mom with young children. That's not something like right. those battle wounds don't completely go away. So it's something you have to continue to embrace and be very aware of and like probably mm-hmm. have a lot of grace with yourself because Mm-hmm. considering you haven't been shown a great model for a family and marriage, mm-hmm. the fact that you yell is probably not a big deal. You know, like <laughs> you, I right, think you're doing right? pretty good against the average. <laughs> oh, that, that's, that makes me feel better. <laughs> good. I'm oh, glad. Yes, this right, is though. the you're therapy right. hour. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'll take it. That's so good. <laughs> so moving into your business, when I met you, you were dominating, you were teaching women how to live stream and how to really monetize their mm-hmm. live stream. I was so inspired Mm -hmm. by you. I loved watching your stuff and I just thought everything you put out there was so smart. And I know you've kind Mm. of phased into a point where you're really doing a business with your husband and supporting him with that and it's a -hmm. successful endeavor. So having Mm -hmm. that hat that you wear as well as the mom hat, you even told me yourself, you're kind of like a ninja when it comes to managing Mm. all those things. So Mm -hmm. give some girls listening some ninja skills. Give us some (laughs) advice on how you manage it all. (laughs) <laughs> oh man, you know it's funny because I you're right. I, when I when I started my online business, I had, you know, 3 under 4 at the time. So I had, you know, just had my third baby and my husband went back to work 3 days postpartum and I was sitting there rocking my little newborn like so sleep deprived in the rocking chair just like crying like like tears streaming down my face just exhaustion and and um he's going back to work and I'm like are you serious this is ridiculous you know and so he um we were crazy we were kind of crazy like we were crazy we actually started two businesses at the same time so he got laid off that job three weeks later and so I had this you know three week old and he's like I really want to get into insurance and I'm like insurance you know I'm thinking like Affleck or (laughs) you know nation like he's going to sit in the desk and <laughs> I'm thinking like that is not you you know because he's like total high-end sales like my husband could you know sell iced on Eskimo like he's so persuasive and so <laughs> he just like seriously I was like this is this is weird why are you going to insurance so he went into insurance and um and then that same year in August of that same year that's when I got on Periscope and so I, you know, I had to learn early on with him traveling and him working most evenings because that's when his appointments were. Um, He Mm -hmm. was out in the field in the evenings that I just had to learn back then to just put systems in place. And I remember hearing a quote that said that you don't want to build um, a two lane system if you want a six lane highway, you know, if you want a six lane business, basically. And so. You just put That's the systems in place when, yeah, and you just want to make sure that you're you're building that from the beginning. You know, you start as you want to continue, and so I just in the, from the very beginning, I even when I didn't know what I was doing, I I took a course called Smart Success by Shalene Johnson, and mm-hmm. um, that changed the game for me because for me it was about just putting things in place, putting systems in place, and even when we didn't have a ton of money, we had somebody coming in a couple times a week to help with laundry and to help with cleaning the house and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, just helping with the kids. And that really freed me up to have the time to pour into my business. And I just really implemented the law of focus in my life, which means that like, basically 
I make sure that, and I'm not, I'm, hear me, hear me. I'm not the best at this, but I just, (laughs) I make sure that I am, when I am working, I'm working. Um, because I, I felt that before, like even recently I was, you know, yelling at my kids cause I was trying to get something done on the computer for our company and, you know, I'm yelling at the barking at the kids and like, you know, the baby's screaming and I'm trying to type on the computer with one hand and nursing him. And like, I just, you know, it was like chaos. And, but most of the time I do try to, you know, when I'm working, I'm working, you know, when I'm not, I'm sitting yeah. on my computer, I'm trying to focus on, you know, just being present and intentional with my kids and I just really make sure I block out certain times. So I am mm-hmm. really protective over my kids' sleeping hours. So I'm protective over like yeah. bedtimes. Um, you know, I'm protective over their nap times. I um, I just really am protective over those times that I'm like, this is my time for me. Whether it's like me time and I'm actually having some like just time for me <laughs> or if it's that I'm yeah. working and I'm actually able to get on the computer and, or go live. And that's how I was able to go live. Um, you know, every single day I went live Monday through Friday without fail because I really wanted to be consistent in content that I was bringing. Um, and the only way I could do that was putting those, those like non-negotiables in place, you know, like this is when my kids yeah. sleep and this is when, you know, and of course that wouldn't always happen. Sometimes they'd be like sitting next to me watching Dora, you know, but like it yep. just, you know, I just made sure that, that even if you weren't sleeping, you're having quiet time, like you are yeah. having quiet time. So, um, you know, that's something that's really important to me. And even, even now, you know, my husband and I got into this big thing the other day and, um, I was realizing that I was taking on too much and mm-hmm. I was getting snappy at him. I was getting snappy at the kids and all these things were happening. And he's like, you need more help. And I was like, I don't need more help. <laughs> I am fine. you know. <laughs> and so we kind of got into it. And, you know, after a little while, he was right. I was taking on too much. And I noticed that in those seasons when I'm just loading my plate too much that, um, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling the stress and so does the rest of the family. And so, if yeah. I just am, am smart about delegating and, um, you know, we do like hello fresh, that's like a simple little thing because it's just helps me. So I don't have to think about meal planning. Yes. Um, those I few love meals, you know, it's so good. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm like, yes. I've been all my life. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I love hello fresh and like things like, you know, having somebody, we just, you know, hired someone again recently that's coming in, um, you know, once or twice a week to help with, laundry and just cleaning the house and getting me caught up on that thing. Cause it's like, it will sit on the back of the couch for four weeks and everybody will just pull that will be the family dresser because everybody will just pull their, their clothes from the, from the back of the, the couch. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> if I don't put them away, you know what I mean? So it's like, I have yeah. to hire someone to come in and just help with that. And so things like that where, um, and people may say, I remember feeling like that where we didn't have a lot of money And, um, it was actually, it cost me more to sit there and do the hours of folding and putting away than it was for me to just put my head down and work. Like I could actually earn more money, um, in the hours that I was working versus the hours that I was, you know, doing all these things that I, I didn't want to be doing anyway. So, um, it worked out for us where it was just like this thing that, okay, I, I know that I can make so much an hour you know, so I can pay somebody, you know, a college student, $15 an hour, wherever, you know, we're in California, so it's a little bit more, but, um, you know, just pay somebody to come in and help you with those little things. And then also help have them come in and help with the kiddos, you know, even if it's a couple hours a week or if it's swapping with another mom, you know, I've done that too. Um, early, early on in my business, uh, there was another mom that was growing her network marketing business and, her and I would swap. So I would watch her kids, um, you know, every other Thursday and then she would watch mine on the off Thursday, you know? So it was like, it was just nice to have like, all right, I'm watching yours and you watch mine. And it's like this agreement that we had and, um, she was able to get, you know, four or five hours of work done. And so was I. And so it's just, you know, we've, we've done different things in different seasons. Um, Mm -hmm. and the other thing that I do is that I'm, I'm really, I, you know, I do time block, you know, so I, I take like three hour blocks, you know, from like six to nine, you know, nine to 12, 12 to three, three to six, six to nine. And I just map out my day and I'm intentional about my day. And this is kind of a little funny thing, but I, um, (laughs) 
I'm a big like list person. So I know, I don't know if uh-huh. like my, my sister's out there who will list people, but I am a total list person. <laughs> and so first thing in the morning, I'm like, mama, don't get her list done. It's going to get ugly, you know? So I just, <laughs> one way that I've implemented that is that I, I make sure like my kids will come out and you know how they are. Like if my, if my kids wake up hungry and I remember waking up hungry too. Like I was like that when I was yeah. little. So I totally, I, I'm on that wavelength, but I, um, you know, they would come out and, or they do come out, mommy, I'm hungry. Mommy, I need something to eat. Mommy, I want breakfast. You know, and the, the like <laughs> spiral of the day starts, you know, and what yes. I started doing was I would grab my coffee and while I was drinking my coffee, however slow that may be, um, I would sit there and I would write my to-do list or, you know, I would like read scripture or I would have my quiet time and I would just tell them like, you can grab a banana or an apple until mommy is done with my coffee. It was like kind of like my timer, you know? So yeah, however long it takes. Lower, they <laughs> knew. Yeah. However long that coffee took for me to get it, you know, get it down to the bottom. Like that was my time to be able to make my list for the day. And, um, you know, and even now they just know to come out and grab a piece of fruit, you know, <laughs> cause That's I'm like, awesome. I'm, not get, I'm not getting breakfast until this, this list is done. So, um, <laughs> that's like I one love way that I've like kind of like commanded my morning, you know, rather yeah. than it kind of taking over me and it's, it helps kind of set the rest of the day up. So, yeah. That's awesome. I love it. Um, our kids go through bananas, like they're going out of style and right? I told them this morning, right? I was like, I'm going to put these in the pantry and then I, cause we lock our <laughs> pantry cause our kids are that out oh, of control. Yeah. With oh, food. Yeah. And so I then I was yeah. like, wait a minute, though. If I lock the bananas up, they'll they'll hound me sooner for breakfast because at least that's their breakfast appetizer, right? Like, right. So I feel you right? on that. I love that. Uh-huh. Totally. <laughs> We're on totally. the same wavelength. The, bre- well, I the breakfast appetizer. <laughs> it is, though, right? Like, why not? We You're have right. it for other meals. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, I love everything you've shared. I think you're so inspirational. And I'm so glad we have connected, like, officially now. And shared a little bit of your story with everybody. So if they want to check out kind of like your business, it's legacybuilderscompany.com. Um, yes. And your Instagram handle is Jess underscore – am I saying your last name right? Win it or win it? Yes, win it. Mm-hmm. Win it. Okay. Like in it to win it. Mm-hmm. I love it. Yeah. Awesome. So perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Sums you up. That's all we need to say. Exactly right. No, I'm right. kidding. <laughs> yes, you're okay. awesome. Final question that everybody loves to answer. Yes. What makes you a marvelous mom? Oh gosh. Um, you know, it's like narrowing it down to one thing. No, I'm just kidding. Um, (laughs) I, (laughs) I love that. Like (laughs) I would say I said, you know, at the beginning, I, I really feel like one thing that I've just tried to be in my life is intentional in every area, you know? And so, Mm -hmm. These babies, man, they don't raise themselves. And it's so, it is the hardest job I've ever had in my entire life. And it's exhausting and it's, um, you know, it's just, it can wear on you. And so I just noticed the days, the weeks, the months that I have focused and been really intentional with my kids, things just go better, (laughs) you know, and, um, they respond better. Um, you know, their behaviors better. Like I just noticed that if I'm intentional, um, that keeps connection, you know? And so I, yeah, that's been like my, my mantra, I think is just really, and I'm not always the best with that, but I really, um, especially in the social media world that we live in, you know, and with our phones and how distracting those can be. And, um, but I just lately, I, I love that lately I've been seeing like you've been like playing more with your kids. Like that's something that I, I try to do more of because I'm naturally yeah. like this list and order person. Yes. And so, Cause you're trying um, to get it all done. Know, yeah. yeah. And I'm totally like, let me get my list done, you know? And so yeah. I, I do, um, that's one area that I've been trying to be better about is just, you know, playing with my kids, having fun with them. And I remember like this, I don't know if it was an article or study or whatever that they did on, um, they asked these, um, I think it was college age or people in their twenties, what was their best memory about their parents? And they said that they just had fun with me, you know? And Mm -hmm. so it was like, oh man, that one's the like knife in the heart because I really (laughs) just need to like be more fun with my kids and like run through the sprinklers with them. And I, you know, 
like you were doing the other day, sliding down the slide with them and just doing the things that they <laughs> want to do because it's so hard to sometimes. It's easy just to stick them outside and yep. get your get your list done, but it's something that I've just really tried to lately focus on just having more fun with them. So I would and it say is lately fun. that would I be feel my like thing. yeah, I feel like sometimes you look at there's some stuff you do with your kids that's just let's be honest, it's not fun. Like sitting on the floor. For a long period of time, it's not fun for me. Legos, I mean, it's Mm -mm, fun for five mm -mm. minutes. But now I do feel like there's phases and seasons of motherhood where it is fun for me to go to the park and play with my kids. Like, because Mm -hmm. they can all play. I don't have anybody in a stroller. I I mean, it's just, you just go through phases where they can all play board games now. Like, they're so much more, they're so much more on my level of fun. Like, this is my inner child coming out because they're the, (laughs) you know, they are my inner child. So totally. I just think it requires being patient with yourself too. You know, like if you have young, mm-hmm. young kids, it is mm-hmm. going to be kind of a sacrifice, but at least you're showing them that you're going to have fun. So yes. you'll always, you know, anyway, I think that's great. I love that answer. I totally you're, agree. You're amazing. Thank you for being on oh, here. You're thank fantastic. You. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. This has been so fun. I've loved it. Good. I'm glad. I love hearing that. I'm so happy. And hopefully mm. everybody listening, you guys have enjoyed and felt inspired and Feel supported and lifted up a little bit. This is what these episodes are geared for. And I'm so glad you mentioned HelloFresh because that is a lifesaver. Mm-hmm. If you're feeling mm-hmm. like you're drowning, make sure you get it. And we'll have a link to it in the show notes so you guys can get started yes. right now. Mm-hmm. So thanks, Jess. And I can't wait to talk to you again soon. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Okay, everybody. We will see you on the next episode. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>